What's going on everyone? I'm sitting here trying to get ready for one of my next videos, which is going to be how to cut different patterns and stuff with the oxy fuel torch and maybe different tools and whatnot to use. I figured I would go about finding a burn bar or a circuit cutter. Dear God, these things are freaking expensive. $100, $150, $289. We're gonna make our own. So forget all that jazz. Now we're just gonna go the DIY route. And if saving money is gonna be what we're trying to do, we're gonna try to source the parts from anywhere and everywhere I can find around my little shop here in Houston, Texas. Now the first thing we'll probably do is make a burn bar, which is basically like a fence for our cutting torch, right? Our hand torch. I know I've got enough angle iron and a piece of this flat bar from a stainless job I did a while back. So we're gonna use this two by two by eighth inch angle iron and this piece of one inch by quarter inch piece of flat bar. It's kind of messed up, so we're going to make things about the same size and about the length that I want. Now we got to find the pieces for our, our little <laughs> circle cutter, that thing. Now looking for these pieces for the circle cutter, this is pretty much what I was looking for were these two pieces of round stock. This is a piece of half inch and some 7 sixteenths. Count all the lines. Now I need something. This will probably be... This is the longest piece I got. I'll probably try to make that the main piece. I need something that slides up and down it. That looks like it'll probably have a little too much wiggle room. There's that piece I was looking for. Looks a little too wiggly too, but... Ooh, what is that? A little bit better. Inside to inside, half inch. We have some stuff to start. Hopefully, that'll be enough, maybe? Dig around in my toolbox, see if I can give you guys some anxiety. Maybe there's some little pieces that I need. Quarter inch by three quarter stainless steel bolts. There's some wing nuts too. Those would probably be handy. Get those out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Washers, some washers. All right. Uh, I need something for legs. Yeah, something like that. But that probably, yeah, I need something maybe. Little weldy weld. Is that? Oh, ooh, that fits better. It's probably zinc though. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe cool too. Ball bearing. Counterweight. Just finding a smorgasbord of things. Now you really can't beat one of the classics. Just a simple piece of angle iron with a piece of flat bar just tacked at the right spot so that you have the perfect offset for your cutting torch, whether you wanna work at an angle or maybe you wanna work at just a straight 90. That's pretty much what this first burn bar does. You could check out the video that Bob did years ago when he just builds his classic burn bar. A guy keeps that thing on it. We're gonna do nothing much different. I'm just gonna trim it up a couple different ways and fit the right piece that I got. We'll see what it looks like when it's done with. Just as my favorite classic fabrication fashion, I love the eyeball stuff. So that's all we're gonna do with pretty much everything today. We're gonna start by cutting this flat bar with the Cubitron 3 cutoff wheel. These things are good enough to cut through the stainless pretty quick, so that's why I have to use that instead of my chop saw. Once we get that done, we're gonna go ahead and line it up to try to get equal lengths for this cut, and then we'll cut this piece of angle iron too. I like to cut this way just because it just seems to be a lot easier with a grinder itself. Once everything is cut to the same lengths, we're gonna go ahead and swap over to the fiber disc, clean up the flat bar a little bit, clean up the other bits, uh, and we're gonna try to find the height of the actual torch. I'm gonna have some clamps so that I can kind of see where everything goes and just drag the torch along it, trying to make sure it stays at least square, and then I can clamp down the other side, and then we'll go ahead and tack up everything all the way down. Once everything's tacked, we can pop the clamps off. We can kind of test out where we're going to have this bar kind of drag don't like that sharp corner on there, so I'm gonna go ahead and take out the fiber disc again and bevel this piece of stainless. Putting a little bit of bevel on here is gonna be really nice to drag that torch on, as well as adding a little bit of a finish with the Scotch-Brite wheel. This will help get everything cleaned up and real smooth so that this torch really slides and glides and we don't have any hangups. And you can kind of tell the difference with the Scotch-Brite wheel on one side versus the other. Such a simple little tool, these little burn bars. And again, all it is is a piece of angle iron and a flat bar. Now, maybe you want a bigger piece of angle iron or a shorter piece, a different size flat bar. Maybe you just want carbon steel. Probably wouldn't recommend aluminum as 
aluminum tends to be a little bit sticky as you try to drag it across the surface but maybe since it's brass and copper you won't have that issue i don't know i think this is good for what i had laying around and that little bit of chamfer on there is going to help me keep that nice angle as i go to put say a bevel on a piece of plate and i can just flip it over so i can get a nice square 90 degree cut you can make them longer you can make them shorter i'm not going to put a handle or anything on it this is it that's all that is right there it's just a straight edge so that you can guarantee a straight cut and you just toss that in your toolbox and you're good to go. Same thing with the circle cutter that we're gonna make. We're gonna make a nice, durable, hopefully very efficient circle cutter. Okay, so here's my plan. Right here, this is going to be the end of my overall shaft here. This is that piece of half inch ID stuff. The only reason why I picked this one is because this piece right here slides right over top of it. That seems to be pretty smooth. I might have to clean it up a little bit and probably keep this greased if I want it to stay like that because there is a couple stiff spots and if I'm trying to slide a torch, I don't want any of those hiccups. This is the piece of solid stock. It'll get cut much shorter to length to match the distance and offset the torch will sit in. This piece right here, what do I call it, 5 eighths, as far as the ID, fits exactly around that torch head there. So that's going to give me something to grip on. I want to actually feel that torch pivot a little bit personally. So the only trouble with that is if that thing slips out. I'm thinking this might be just long enough. I might make it a little bit longer so that as long as you've got a little bit of an angle on it as far as tension, it shouldn't be easy to pull out. Of course, we'll have a set screw on here and then I've got my washers and this weird contraption and Allen key and something else to really fill the hole of those. I'm basically making a wheel on the other side so I don't have to put so much effort into getting the right distance or maintaining the distance as I go to cut a circle, especially a bigger one. And then on the very end here, I got a little ball bearing just for funsies. It might be a nice little counterweight. It's more or less just for looks and to keep the everything from sliding apart. I don't like to overcomplicate things. So we're gonna do the whole eyeball fashion stuff and just start with this first part. We're gonna punch and drill our hole so that we can put our setting screw in here. Before we tack anything into place, we'll come over to the Lincoln Sprinter 180SI, set up our high frequency TIG for the day. I don't want a bunch of big tacks on here to put too much heat into the part. A good TIG rig hood for that and a nice light TIG torch also comes in handy when it comes to welding smaller stuff like this circle cutter here. We're going to start by welding this bolt onto it. This is going to be our end piece for the end of the tube. Once we've got that bolt welded on, we'll go ahead and put the set screw bolt in for the part that's going to slide along the tube. We have them all tacked in place. I'm not going to go into welding any of it yet. Didn't like that I, the nut on the end of this set screw wasn't really easy to turn with your fingers. So I put a wing nut on the end and just kind of just welded it straight to it. Nothing fancy. Just uh, didn't want to overcomplicate anything, but I still wanted to be able to twist that without a tool. We got our long bar here for the actual circle cutter. We wanna clean it up. I'm gonna go ahead and take a Scotch-Brite wheel from 3M and get that nice and shiny all the way around because I want it to slide and glide really smooth on the part, as well as maybe putting a little bit of a chamfer on the ends of the tube so that the parts slide and glide easy on. We're gonna end up capping the whole tube at the end of the day, but still wanna get it nice and cleaned and tidied up. The first problem I had was that the piece that I already put some tacks in, the tacks bled through the tube and I needed a way to clean that up. So I started with a little file, but that was for the birds. So I went and grabbed the ID grinder and a burr bit in there. And that cleaned it up really quick so that we had some nice sliding parts. So this is our set screw with the wing nut. Looks good, slides good. And now we're gonna move into putting the end cap on. This is gonna be the piece that holds the actual torch in place. It's the perfect size for the tips on this particular torch that I'm using. And all I really need to worry about here is just getting it square or at least 90 degrees to the actual main tube. So we'll put our first tack in and kind of just eyeball it. It's not super duper crucial. We just wanna make sure it's pretty close. Once we get it pretty close, I'm going to go ahead and throw the torch in here and you can kind of see what I'm looking for. I want that torch to fit in easy. Oh yeah, that's nice and easy. Good slide. I can rotate the torch just fine, but my torch hits this wing nut, which I'm not super stoked about. This is kind of a prototype. Maybe I'll fix that later on, but now it comes for a little bit of measuring. We want to get the perfect distance from this piece of hot rolled steel that we have so that we're about three eighths, a little bit past a quarter of an inch, I would say, when it comes to the torch distance and the standoff to the material itself. I wanted to use the hot rolled steel, but I looked to my left and saw that there was a punch sitting on the table, an old one that I never really used. And the line on it honestly was the perfect distance. I went ahead and chopped that punch off 
and we started tacking it onto the piece pretty much right off the other side of the wing nut. Now, again, this does not necessarily have to be right there because the wing nut only serves the purpose of holding it in place and then the punch just keeps it where it needs to be as far as the center of the circle. Now we can start mocking up our 90 degree wheel for the edge here. I didn't really know how I was gonna go about this, but we found these little washers in this little fitting. We're gonna call it a wheel hub today. So we're gonna go ahead and lay these washers down and tack one, flip it over, and then maybe try to square it up a little bit. This was kind of tedious, especially since the part was kind of spicy. But once we got that other washer on and tacked into place, we had our wheel. Basically the two washers would hold the bigger washer in place. Careful, it is pretty friggin' hot. And then we put the Allen key on, tacked it in place, went ahead and welded that out so that we have our little 90 degree leg. The bottom of that wheel has to line up the exact height as the actual punch itself. To get that to happen, I just laid it on a flat piece of steel that had a nice straight cut. I laid the wheel off so that everything will lay flat. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're doing mostly eyeball stuff, but I'm gonna whip out a ruler and still get a distance. Once I got it there, I can go ahead and put my mark where I like it. I'm gonna go ahead and tack that piece right onto that mark and try my best to get it at like a 90 degree situation, right? Still, I'm gonna eyeball most of it. I'm not really, it's hard you put a square on that. It's not easy. Go ahead and put some solid tacks on it and then cut all this extra stuff off because that's just gonna get in the way as we rotate the torch. Put a little tacky tack on the top of it so that it's not sharp and it kind of looks a little bit nicer. And we'll give it our first little test run for this torch. Everything's tacked together. Don't have a punch mark in here. Should have put a stinking punch mark in here. But we can see that it's it's gliding pretty good. The wheel rolls as long as I can hold the stinking thing right there. Don't move. All right, now the wheel rolls. It looks like we're keeping the same distance off the plate. So that's important. Here's a little bit of a closer look because my camera was out of focus. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now I'm not done yet. There's still another tool I wanna add to this. So we're gonna take the same tube that slides and we're gonna add another set screw option-esque kind of thing. Use our cutoff wheel, cut another portion off and then add another piece of that Allen key that we cut off. And I'm gonna take all that that I just added and pretty much cut off almost all of it, just so that I can add it to the set screw portion that I just saw before and put that as a portion on here so that I can still slide my torch in. And now I have not only a circle cutter, but I have a cutter that I can cut linear lines with as long as I can hold it pretty steady. So, you know, this is a quick, quick way of doing things. Seems to be pretty light in the hand. I like it. Definitely want to have a punch mark for my position here. But now I can close everything up by putting this ball bearing on the end of the circle cutter itself. That'll kind of seal the deal on everything. And then here it is all tacked up. It spins. Everything moves pretty free. I like it. We're going to go ahead and weld everything. Nothing too technical. We're just taking some small 16th inch TIG wire, flipping it around the table here. Kind of welding in some spots opposite of each other, not to put too much heat into one area. I will say during the weld out here, I should have welded everything off the tube first in case things shrunk or bled through. It still looks pretty sick to me and I'm excited for how it turned out. And that's it guys. This is our two tools that you can just make right here at home. The burn bar is probably the easiest. You're going to be probably set up for success for cutting straight lines and bevels. I'll probably keep this around for pretty much just beveling because after putting this thing together, which was a little bit more tricky, you can just start cutting your circles. It'll cut probably like a, a minimum of maybe like an inch and a half circle or two inch circle. It's, it's going to be cutting some bigger circles. So this may not be the one that you want to make. Maybe you want to make one smaller. Regardless, you can still put it on there, get your torch set in there, and you can use that wheel as a guide. My wing nut honestly is biting me in the butt right now. Need to try to shorten that up, but I could still work around one way or another. The cool thing about this other piece that I threw on there, I can turn this around so I'm off that wheel, slide this down, stick my torch back in here, put the punch where I need to be, and then I can just kind of use my hand as a prop and guide myself for a straight cut too. I'm getting a little bit of friction. And I think that's mainly from welding these while they were on the bar. I should have welded them off the bar and then cleaned them up on the insides. That way they would have kept with this slide a little bit better. But stick around for the next episode where I teach you guys a little bit of techniques on cutting different shapes out, whether they be circles, straight lines, squares, different, whatever they may be, where to start, where to stop, what tools we can use, and what technology is out there. We'll see you guys on the next weld. That's like right in my grill.